Welcome to another Hopeless Production, my name is Josh, and today we're going to be talking about the only designated pinch runner in MLB history, Herb Washington. A quick visit to one of the best sports websites you can find will give an easy to read breakdown of the MLB career of Herb the Hurricane Washington. Much like real hurricanes, it was short. Over two seasons with the Oakland Athletics, he played in 105 games. His most notable stats come in the 74 season, with 29 runs scored and 29 stolen bases in a season where he appeared in just over half of the 162 games. His stolen base totals were good for 7th in the league, and if he stole bases at that same rate while playing in all 162, he would have finished 2nd in the league with 48, just behind his own teammate Bill North. There was, however, one catch to Herb's season. His batting average was zero. He didn't drive in any runs, and he didn't have a single hit, because Herb didn't have any at-bats. Our story starts in Flint, Michigan. Herb was born in Mississippi in 1951, but his family moved while he was still an infant to pursue jobs in the booming auto industry of the surrounding Detroit area. By the late 60s, Herb is a star on the Flint Central High track team. He ran the 100-yard dash in 9.4 seconds, which is a time that still ranks in the top 25 fastest runs for that race. The speed he possessed attracted several scholarship offers from across the nation. Herb ended up choosing Michigan State University because he knew that the school also had a number of black athletes. At Michigan State, the four-time All-American won one NCAA title, won seven Big Ten titles, and tied or broke the world record in the 50 and 60-yard dashes several times. During the 1972 indoor season, he set the world record in the 60-yard dash, running it in 5.8 seconds at a home meet. This is a record that still stands today and will likely stand forever because races run in yards are very rare, with the records no longer being tracked as of 1976. To sum up his track career, Washington was on the cover of the February 1972 edition of Track and Field News, and later said his biggest disappointment was not qualifying for the 72 Summer Olympics in Munich, West Germany. Shortly after winning the 1973 World Series, Oakland A's manager Alvin Dark was watching a track meet on television. After watching Herb compete, Dark convinced the A's owner, Charlie Finley, to sign him. Dark would always be Herb's biggest supporter, repeatedly telling reporters about his value to the team. The way scouting was conducted back then just amazes me. Washington would be signed as a designated runner on a one-year deal for $45,000, which was $5,000 higher than league average at the time, plus a $20,000 signing bonus. The contract had an unusual clause requiring Washington to grow facial hair before the beginning of the season. Washington had difficulty growing a full mustache, so he used an eyebrow pencil to simulate full facial hair. I'm gonna assume this was a player started thing where everyone did it as a fun team thing, but it's still weird to contractually require it. There was no question that the hurricane was fast, but his baseball instincts were lacking. There's a story that Washington once asked Alvin Dark if he should try to steal second, only to have it pointed out to him that second base was already occupied. In his early time with the team, many of his teammates didn't really accept him as a part of it. They felt the signing was more of a publicity stunt by a known eccentric and owner, Charlie Finley. One day, Washington was being interviewed by a reporter, and his teammate I mentioned earlier, Bill North, taunted Herb from the dugout saying, Hey, ink spot. Sure, Bill, if that's supposed to be insulting. This is getting ridiculous. You're getting more ink than Reggie. I didn't know this team had two superstars. And to that, Washington replied, Why don't you go fix your bats? They're full of holes. This is believed to be Herb's turning point in finally feeling comfortable with the team. I'd also like to point out that Herb was being paid more than Bill during this time. Bill North and I have become good friends, Washington said. We spend a lot of time together on the road and he's explained a lot of baseball to me. I don't know why we hit it off, but I guess it might be because we both have some hot dog in us. I love it. Don't know what it means, but I love it. While holding some value to the team, Herb was caught stealing 16 times, good for 35% of his attempts. He was famously picked off in the 1974 World Series by Dodgers pitcher Mike Marshall in the ninth inning of Game 2, allowing the Dodgers to win their only game of the series. In this video posted by the MLB, it was obvious in his body language that he was going to steal, regardless of Marshall's pickoff attempts. Can you blame Herb, though? He wanted to say that he stole a base on the biggest baseball stage in the world, and the disappointment of not achieving that hits him immediately. Maybe you didn't catch it, but I said this sealed the Dodgers' only win in the series. Oakland had just won back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back World Series, and Herb was a part of it. A man who hadn't played baseball since he was 15, had no professional baseball experience, 
asked to steal second while someone was standing on it. Had no real business playing Major League Baseball. Had just become a World Series champion. Early in the 1975 season, Herb the Hurricane Washington was released by the Oakland Athletics. He was replaced in his designated runner role by Don Hopkins. Others have said Hopkins wouldn't have made the MLB if not for his running ability, but what gave him the edge was his ability to play the field and put in more meaningful at-bats than Herb would ever be able to. After baseball, Herb would return to professional track for a brief stint before ending his athletic career for good in 1976. In 1980, he would move from Detroit to Rochester, New York to open an inner-city McDonald's. It's there he found success as a businessman, later becoming president of his own restaurant enterprise company that owns 21 McDonald's franchises in Ohio and Pennsylvania as of 2009. Washington never batted in a game and never took a defensive position. He is in fact the only non-pitcher to have played in over 100 games without recording a single plate appearance. Washington's 1975 Topps baseball card is the only baseball card ever released that uses the pinch runner position label. The practice of keeping a designated runner on an MLB roster is fading away as teams try to find complete players with more of an emphasis on offense, making this record the second one Herb holds that will likely never be broken due to a changing of the times. Thanks for watching this week's Hopeless Production. This was probably a story you didn't know about, but I really loved reading about it, so I figured maybe you'd like watching something about it. If you enjoyed it, let us know. If you'd like to read some more about Herb, I've put a link in the bio that covers his life a little closer and has some good quotes and stories about him. I'll see you guys next time.